here we go. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down things, the strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And this next line is the major thought for this series. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. It said bringing every thought into captivity. Let's pray, and then we're going to jump into this. Amen. Father God, we thank you. God, we bless you for your presence. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this church. God, for the people that are getting baptized today, dear God, how they're going to sense such a new free peace, God, and freedom and joy in their lives. God, we pray in this moment, God, that you would speak to us. God, anoint me to speak. Anoint us to hear. And God, bless the ravens. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And you may be seated in the house of the Lord. I don't know what is wrong with me. Last week, I wasted a prayer on the Redskins. <laughs> and I didn't pray for the Ravens, and we lost to the Bills. What? You are a praying church. Pray <laughs> for the Ravens. I'm excited about this series. We're launching this series today called Mind Games, talking about taking authority in our thoughts and how vital and important that is. Now, before I jump into it, I'm going to encourage you, make sure you make it to service. If no other month you come every Sunday, come every Sunday this month. All month long, we're going to be talking about how do I have victory over fear, over worry, over anxiety, over these things that handicap me and keep me from all that God has for me. Next week, we have one of our overseers, Pastor Larry Kirk, is going to be coming in and I'm preaching. It's going to be an awesome message at all three services, Saturday and Sunday. So make sure that you come to one of those. But as I was preparing for this series, and I did a little research, and you know how I like statistics, I discovered that the average person thinks between 15,000 and 50,000 thoughts a day. How many people say that's a lot of thinking? Now, depending on how deep you are, you might be closer to the 10,000 or closer to the 50,000, depending on, on what type of person you are. But I also discovered out of those 15 to 50,000 thoughts, statistics show that about 70 to 80% of those thoughts are negative. The majority of thoughts that we have are thoughts of regret. Thoughts of remorse, of guilt, of shame, of anger, of pride, of insecurity, all these different things. And without even realizing it, we are completely tormented. And these thoughts handicap us from being effective in all that God has called us to do. Let me just make it light for a second. Have you ever left your house one day on the way to work? And as you're driving to work, you couldn't remember whether you locked your front door or not? And you're, you're, you're just tormented all day at work. You're just like, did I lock it or not? Did I lock it or not? And you're supposed to be working, but you just have this picture in your mind that there's a U-Haul truck backed up to your front door, and people are just loading your stuff out of your house, just taking their time. You're just like, oh, man, or maybe did I leave the stove on, or did I leave that iron plugged in? And what happens? You get home, the door's locked. <laughs> The stove is off, the iron is unplugged, and you spent an entire day bugging out over what? Nothing. But on a serious note, that happens to us a lot. We just have a thought, I don't have what it takes to take this next step. And instead of stepping out in boldness, we're, we're constantly debating, should I go for it or should I not? Is this God? Is this not? Or am I going to be rejected or am I not? And without even knowing it, because we're not winning the victory in our thoughts, thought life, we are being rendered ineffective and useless in what God has called us to do. So today what I want to do in the time that I have is just set up a foundation for this series, Mind Games, that we can begin to walk in victory in this area and see all that God has for us come to pass. If you can open your worship guide, there's sermon notes in there, and the first thing that I want you to write down is this, a battle is raging. The first point that I want you to write down is a battle is raging. There's two things that stick out to me from this verse. In verse 3, it says this, 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me about that verse is the verse war, warfare. Now, I don't know about you. Some of you, your movie selections, you might like chick flicks. You, you might like romantic comedies or whatever. I can't stand them. I was taken under hostage to watch The Great Gatsby. And it was the most miserable 12 hours of, it felt like 12 hours of my life. I'm sitting there just like, man, maybe if I like jump down now, I'll hit my head and knock myself out and I'll wake up when, the, I mean, it was just, mis some of you are offended. I don't like this past. That was the greatest movie of all time. It was horrible. <laughs> Those eyes just, what, what in the world? I like espionage. I love war movies. I love action. The, 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 there's something about, hey, someone's not making it to the end of this movie. <laughs> that just gets me, this is what I'm talking about. And I don't know if you've ever seen, especially in, in the espionage movies, Born, Supremacy, Ultimatum, Identity, Legacy, one of the five movies <laughs> that Born has done. There's always this scene. It's usually in a foreign country. And there's this outdoor marketplace. You, 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 you're with me already. You know what I mean? And you have the assassin or whoever they are, and they're, they're stalking through the crowd on the person they're targeting. And then you have Born or Bond or whoever it is, and they're a little further back, and they're following this person. There's a war going on, but the people that are shopping and doing groceries have no clue about it. And then all of a sudden, the assassin sees Bond, and Bond sees them or whatever, and it's like, pop, pop, pop. And then everybody knows it's a war. It's like, ah! And they're scrambling, and they're running, and then the chase is on. And, and I mean, it, 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 I love it. You, you can see how excited I get. But this is what I find. Back to the marketplace. A lot of us do not realize that there is an all-out war going on over our minds every single day. We're like those people that are just shopping and buying produce, not knowing that there's a major threat in our midst. Even this moment, the enemy is warring over your mind. He's trying to distract you. He's trying to keep you from listening to this message. He's saving you sit there saying, hold on, does the pastor not have socks on? How in the world am I going to listen to a pastor that doesn't have socks on? I can't concentrate. I can't focus. What day? I mean, he's warring over this moment over your mind. And it's so important that you realize this is not just random. This discouragement that I'm facing is not just happenstance. There's a battle that's going on. There's a war that's going on in my mind. Statistics show that right now there are more people in America that are taking medication for depression than ever before. More depression medication is being given than any other medication in this nation. There is a war that's going on. The second thing that I realize about this verse is that the war is spiritual and it's not natural. The Bible says that the weapons we have, they're not carnal. It means, it means they're not of this earth, but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Whenever it comes to negative thoughts, negative feelings, it's so easy to attach a person to those thoughts. I'm saying, I have the joy of the Lord until I go to work. <laughs> and as soon as I see my beautiful boss, I mean, all joy, all peace, everything I heard at church is just gone. And I mean, it, they're not the enemy. <laughs> you know, even sometimes we'll begin to say Hollywood and the music industry and, and the political system and CNN and MSNBC, they're, they're trying to control the way that we think. It's important to know our war is not against the natural. No matter how many people might be your irritant, they're not the enemy. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. The enemy is the one that's trying to keep you distracted. 
from what God has for you. And here's why. The second point is this. If you could write this down, because the territory is priceless. The reason why the war over your mind is so major, the enemy is throwing all that he has, is because he knows how valuable your thoughts are. 